January 18th of reading through your Bible chronologically in one year, we read Leviticus 7 and 8. So we got to see more instructions for the guilt offering, the peace offering, some, you know, specifics about how to prepare that and how the how it provides for the priests. And then we saw the ordination of the priest. And what a couple of things that I really found interesting about what we read was number one, God calls the, the these offerings, the guilt offering in particular, he called it most holy. And he called the offerings special gifts presented to the Lord. And I love that because it really is an acknowledgement that this is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice for us when we offer ourselves to God or we offer whatever we have to God. It's a sacrifice to us. So it's nice to know that God sees that and calls that a special gift to him. And when we when we offer ourselves, when we offer our lives to God, it is a gift. It's a gift from us to him and he sees that. I love that. Then we go on in the rest of chapter 7 and you know, it's talking more about the thank offering, safety guidelines on how to eat that, not to eat the fat because that's the Lord's. We already talked about that. And I love God's heart for his priests. You know, the priests weren't out there. They weren't providing for themselves. Their lives were completely dedicated to serving the people and serving God. And so God uh, provides for them through all the offerings. So I love to see just his, his caretaking heart for his priests. And then we see the ordination of the priests. And we get to see what the the correct order of offering the sacrifices were like you couldn't just go up into the tabernacle and just start you know and say okay i'm here to make um a burnt offering well you know you had to do a sin offering which is what they did first and then after that there was the burnt offering and then after that they did the ordination offering where um where the aaron and his sons got the blood on their earlobe their thumb and their toe and so they were completely set apart and again the altars were consecrated and so here we see kind of the order of the offering so that was cool I thought because you know as you read through the offerings you're like wait how does this work and so you know the sin offering would come first to get you in a right relationship with God so that you could move on to you know a grain offering or whatever okay and so as i was looking at this i was thinking okay this is this is all really interesting to know how it worked back then but how does this look in our lives today and really what this was about was getting in right relationship with god giving god his rightful place in our lives you know we're submitted to god he is an authority and this all these offerings were saying that like we are in need of atonement our whole lives are dedicated to you, God. It was a form of worship for them. So in our New Testament times, what does that look like? If we're going to offer up our lives in worship to God, what does that look like? Yesterday, we talked about being living sacrifices to God, giving up our lives to God. So what does that look like on a daily basis? So it could look like, you know, the, the ones that we always talk about, which is, you know, reading your Bible and praying and, and doing those things, those are important. It can also look like praise and worship. You don't have to be at church to praise and sing. I mean, I have awesome, loud praise parties all by myself. You know, that's what Spotify is for. <laughs> and so you can praise and worship. You can, if you are the silent type, you can just sit down and be silent and turn everything off and just listen. Maybe that includes going for a walk in nature and looking around at all the awesome things that God has made and thanking him for those things or just taking them in as an acknowledgement that you are one of those created things that God spent so much time on. Maybe it's giving. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 talks about the importance of giving and giving from a pure heart, not out of compulsion. And so maybe it's giving of your money, of your time, of your energy, of your knowledge, of your wisdom, whatever, whatever that looks like. It's the annual celebrations, putting God in his rightful place in our Christmas celebrations, Easter. We talked about that before. Maybe it's using and growing in your spiritual gifts. There's four places in the Bible that talk about those. Look those up. Find out what your spiritual gift is that God has given you to serve his people and grow in it and use it for his glory. Maybe it's submission, submitting what you want for what God wants, so they're obeying. Sometimes that's seen as, ew, I don't want to do that, but the older we get, the more that we find out that, hey, God knows what he's talking about, and a lot of obedience is about keeping us safe and so and keeping us fulfilled. So maybe sacrificing what we want 
on, on the metaphorical altar for what God wants. Maybe it's art. Maybe you're like one of those real crafty people or an artist of some sort or a writer of some sort or something like that, a spoken word type of person. How can you use that to worship God? Maybe it's standing up for truth. Maybe you're one of those justice type people who stands up for God's truth with love and with tact. Um, maybe it's actively loving people. Maybe it's saying yes on something that's really scary. There are a ton of ways that it can look when we wanna just spend our lives worshiping God. And so my challenge to us today is to ask God, okay, God, what would it look like today for me to live my life as an act of sacrifice for you, to worship you, to spend my everyday moments worshiping you? What does that look like? All right, so tomorrow, February 19th, is Leviticus 9 through 11, and I will talk to you then. Bye.